What's up, Scrollgers? It's Nerp here, and you're looking at the bracket for the ESL Series 2015 Season 2 playoffs. Uh, so there was six tournaments in Season 2. I only played in two of them, although I did win one of them and come in fourth in the other. So that was able. Uh, well, that was enough to give me a good seed in the extra qualifying tournament uh, for the last chance to get into the playoffs and. I won my grouping there, so I was able to earn a spot in these playoffs. And this tournament was really cool because it had a legitimate cash prize, although it was provided by ESL, not Mojang. A uh, hundred euro brand, grand prize for this uh, this tournament was uh, pretty cool to see. So the way this tournament worked was everything is best of three: the quarterfinals, semifinals, uh, winners bracket, finals, losers bracket uh, each round, also. Uh, except for the grand finals, uh, those are the only ones that's uh, that's the only one that's a best of five. And to differentiate between the winners bracket and losers bracket, uh, the grand finals, the person in the winners bracket that got there from the winners bracket has a one win advantage. Uh, so the decks I played throughout this tournament, I tried to switch out the decks so that I wouldn't be predictable. Um, I played, I guess I played one deck in each faction. I played uh, a range energy type build that was really just built as a direct counter to late game order with the metal wonders ecomatons all that stuff um i played a couple matches with aggro growth uh a match or two with late game order with no mangan i was actually it was just like an arbalist here late game order and then uh a couple of matches with mono late game ish creature decay uh so i beat football eddie um uh, two games to none in the quarterfinals, then I beat Bronal two games to none in the semifinals, then PQ in the winner's bracket finals. I'm not going to say the score because we're actually going to watch one of those matches in the video today so you can find out the score of that after. But you'll know I did beat him in the best of three though. Uh, but he came right back to face me in the finals because uh, he beat uh, Gia Loda in the loser's bracket finals. So we had our PQ had his rematch with me, uh, but in the grand finals, I. Uh, beat him 3-0 in the best of five. Well, I guess I only won two of those games uh, because I started with a 1-0 lead. So yeah, this is um, taken from the official stream at twitch.tv slash scrolls. I recorded it myself this match, but I realized I, should, I could just get it from there. And then you could see PewQ's hand as I commentate over it. So, I mean, obviously I would make different plays if I saw his hand while I was playing. Uh, but it's always nice to see uh, what both players have in their hands. So I'm also gonna, I'm also gonna include a link in the description to uh, the official, not the, yeah, the the uh, official scrolls highlight of this. So you could, if you, in case you want to watch it with Atmaz and Blinky commentating over it. Uh, but yeah, I just, I just wanted to commentate over it myself and put it on my channel because I think it's one of the best games I have played in a long time. The K vs. K, everybody. Here we go. So here we are, uh, make note that PewQ is actually on the left and I'm on the right, so it might get a little confusing. Uh, so he uh, went first and both of our starting ends are pretty good in the mirror match. He has a decent early start and so do I. I actually elect not to play the little Darkling this turn and just Languid because I know he's Decay and I'm afraid of Soul Steel. Looking at his hand he didn't have a Soul Steel, but he did have a Brain Light, which he could have just taken me out. But it wouldn't be too bad because I could just put the Rot Eater down this turn and I'd have a 4-4 Rot Eater from the Darkling dying from the Brain Lice. So, so far it looks like I have a stronger creature on the board so not too bad, but he does get to use the Brain Lice on the Rot Eater now. And my hand, it's really just I'll play a Harvester this turn. I'm really deciding what I want to sacrifice. Uh, I probably should sacrifice the Soul Steel here, that's what I do. Um, because there's not a high chance of Decay playing... Uh, two health or less creatures uh, after the first couple of rounds. So he gets the Oblivion Seeker out, and my Harvester is out. Uh, it's going to count down from my Brain Lice Rod here in a second, and I do get rid of the Halls of Omlasa this turn, because I'm always a little hesitant to play Halls of Omlasa in the mirror match, with it because I'm afraid to rattle him. And then as soon as I see Pukey plays Halls of Omlasa, I'm like a little bit reg regretting that decision, uh, because he's going to be able to ramp ahead of me with I don't have one. So... It's a little tough, and I do have the Witch Doctor out though, so I have like the board advantage with nice strong creatures, and but he has 
a Blaving Seeker on the board, which is going to draw him scrolls. He has a Hall of Elmasan out. He's playing more towards the late game. He gets his own Wish Darker out. So yes, I'm definitely wishing this turn, instead of kept keeping the Brain Lights, I had a Halls of Elmasa to play this turn. But a Blaving Seeker's not too bad. Also, can get me some scrolls. And so, PewQ uh, gets to uh, take the Cluster Hex back, which is pretty big with the Halls of Elmasa there. So he was able to get that. And he actually goes for the Cluster Hex Mirror Curse here, which I was not expecting. Um, I wasn't sure if he was playing more of a Poison Decay deck or a just late game Decay deck, just Mono Decay. Uh, he turns out he did have he did have some Poison stuff. I believe he was countering my Mono Energy Range deck, which I just played. So this was the winners. This is not the Ultimate Finals. This is the Winners Bracket Finals. It was a best of three. You see the scores on the top. Atman has just put those up. That shows that I'm 1-0 in the series. The match before this, I was playing uh, Range Energy and I won. So here he probably change up poisonous decay because that generally beats uh, that generally beats range energy so here I kind of separate because of the Mire curse I had to choose the Mire curse would have to destroy either my life stealer or my harvester um, just the way I could move around I choose to destroy the life stealer because I'll get a husk and the harvester is gonna be really nice if it can attack but looking at PewQ's hand it wasn't gonna get to attack <laughs> Uh, look at those two soul steals that brain lies many possible ways for him to destroy. He also has damage curse for the other harvester. Uh, PewQ's Halls of Amasa is going to go away this turn though, so he could just play the Halls of Amasa. Because if you didn't know, if you play Halls of Amasa when, when Halls, Halls of Amasa is about to expire, then you will uh, get one extra turn of it. But he elects to just uh, destroy some things on my board, gets rid of both harvesters that turn with a damage curse and a soul steal, and he is definitely looking ahead in this game. All I have is a a Meyer uh, cursed witch doctor really and I have to build my board back up and he has the uh, advantage because he has eight resources where I have seven uh, mirror match is always very important on who is head in the scrolls and resources so I do sacrifice that uh no that was PQ he sacrifices his other halls on another halls on Lhasa uh, here he has a little bit of advantage now he just wants to get more creatures in the board and increase his lead uh, so it looks like he went up to 9 resources. I think he's going to play all 3 of these scrolls this turn. He does play it on the Witch Doctor. Even though it has Mire Curse, he wants to get rid of that Witch Doctor sooner or later. And uh, I guess the Harvester could have been another target. If I was in Pikachu's I think I probably would have put it on the Harvester. Uh, Brain Lice is really just like a sure kill on the Harvester. Um, just the amount of time it takes it. It just counts it down and then you like eventually you can't use the damage curse without it dying. And it's just like, kind of nullifies it. So now it's my turn, there's a couple of things attacking on his side, I just get down to Oblivion Seeker, uh, do I play this Loyal Darkling? I'm not sure, yeah, I do not play it. So I'm just trying to work my, work my way back into this game, he's at 9 resources and I'm at 7, and he is set to destroy some of my things here, and now he gets another Brain Lice on the Harvester, so not so good. And he, for some reason he runs away here, I think just because he was afraid I had a Soul Stealer or something or a damning curse to be able to uh, get my harvester to attack. Um, I did not have that, so I was happy he ran away from me, uh, because then I would be more threatened from his harvester. And now it looks like I have a turn to rebuild my board. There's no Meyer, Meyer Curse Witch Doctor in the way. I can just uh, get some things down. Uh, I'm considering going up to eight resources to play the Witch Doctor and the Little Dark, and I'd like to sacrifice the scrolls, but I really want more scrolls at this point. Um, I know Lord Darkling right now is not going to really do too much. So I do play the Witch Doctor this turn. And I see uh, I see I have a Muda Fighter and a Necrogun I just drew. Muda Fighter not too good in the uh, Muda Fighter is not too good in the mirror match because it gets easily soul stolen. Basically, if you're new to scrolls, uh, two things you want to watch out for. Try not to play things with uh, Two health or less against decay, and three health or three health or less against energy for scrolls like Soul Steel and Burn, which are really valuable, like high value removal scrolls. So he just went with another uh, cluster hex thing, and I'm just gonna put more things on the board. He's a lot of things attacking. Uh, there's not, I'm not gonna really be able to uh, do uh, do a whole lot here. Maybe uh, if I had one more resource, I probably would have Necrogen because I would be able to get a third creature, I think, down on the bottom row to destroy that Harvester. But now it looks like from him just doing well so so well, uh, just destroying my creature earlier on, he has more resources than me. Uh, I looks like I have the control of the board because he moved down to the bottom. I have the control of the board. I have two Oblivion Seekers out, a Witch Doctor, a 4-4 Rod Eater, 
and it looks like I kind of turned it around because even though he has more resources and scrolls than me, I think board control in general is more important. Uh, not if it's like a huge advantage in resources and scrolls, then you could just erase all that board control in one turn. But uh, so he maneuvers around a little bit, uh, and I lose one of my oblivions, both of my oblivions here actually, so I get a bunch of scrolls this turn. I have a lot, a lot, a lot of scrolls. Two Necrogeddons, another Witch Doctor, uh, some nice plays I could do, and. I'm at 8 resources, so I'm able to go to 9, and all of a sudden, I never played Halls of Losses so far this game, and he has, but it looks like I'm going to be ahead of him in scrolls and have the same number of resources. So, I go up to 9 resources here, and let me try to remember, what do, I, what do I play here? I'm just recording this a few days after the fact, so I don't remember all the plays. Alright, so I go to 9, do I play another Witch Doctor here? Uh... Yeah, so I play the other Witch Doctor, I have nice threats on the board. He has a Harvester though, which is always scary. Harvesters are really key in the Decay vs. Decay matchups. So he has another Demon Curse, which is... Um, I'm not sure if it's at 5 cost for him. Yeah, I think because he had Demon Cursed the Harvester before. So he has a 5 drop Living Seeker and a 4 drop uh, Curse Monger Orb Infectious Blight to play. He did, elects to go with the Curse Monger, trying to get more creatures on the board. Um, now I have a 5-5 five, five Rod Eater, and I'm just going to get more humans around those Witch Doctors, that's what I want to do. And seeing that, uh, that Harvester there, uh, I have a Damon Curse for it, so that's why I didn't Languid it. Uh, knowing I have a Damon Curse for it, um, I didn't want to waste a Languid on it, so I think I do Damon Curse it this turn, just to stop worrying about it. I do take some damage on my side of the board, uh, but I think it's worth it. Um, it doesn't put anything into 2 health, uh... That had 3 health into 2 health, which, like I said, is very important risk decay. I go with 5 idle damage rather than destroying the Blight Bear. Um, I know idle damage might be key because I have 2 Necro Guns. I can get a surprise uh, double Necro win. Um, or if I. Uh, to kind of end this. Um, it's unfortunate. I think I already did sacrifice both of the Watchers in the deck, so I'm not going to have those until the deck recycles or I play a Hossel and Lassa. Uh, so now I'm at 10 resources. And he's at Versus Scrolls. He has a Cluster Hex and an Infectious Blight, so he can start some poison stuff going. Um, but even with the damage curse, I still have a bunch of four health creatures, so they're not going to like be taken out by one tick of poison uh, so fast anyways. He damage curses one of the Witch Doctors. I got a Husk out of it, and then um, the other Witch Doctor with a Curse and Poison. So there go the two Witch Doctors in one turn. Uh, that's a little, a little rough for me, and it looks like he might be clawing his way back into this game. And now, seeing that I have something poisoned, I have a bunch of husks that aren't really doing anything. He is in it. He has um, like a bunch of three health units, like that low down, that low witch doctor on the bottom. I do elect a necrogun in here. I mean, you don't always want a necrogun when it looks like you're ahead. But against Decay, which doesn't have anything like Quake or Thunder Surge to quickly clear the board, uh, Necrogun's like almost like a safe play because it's not like you're going to lose all these husks so fast. So I made that trade. Um, I cleared most of his board. And I elected not to destroy the Let Bear or Oblivion Seeker on the Bendel because he's just going to get scrolls from a unit that has zero attack and that thing's just going to poison me and he's just going to die and deal zero damage. Uh, so Pukyu has two Necroguns of his own. Um, so he's definitely considering doing that, and I did some metal damage there, so he's probably worried about another Necrogun and, and me winning the game, which is exactly what I'm thinking. I'm trying to get a quick snipe win, and uh, that's what he's thinking. So he Necroguns with a Roger 2, and he goes to 10 resources. So he poisons a couple husks and destroys my other two husks, and now it's my turn. And seeing that I have two poison husks that are gonna go away, I may as well get the use out of them, and Necrogun again. Unfortunately, I really wanted to have uh, some other creature to play this turn, but I, I sacrificed the scrolls. I did not get a 3-drop to play with it, or a Watcher. I guess I already sacrificed the Watcher, so that's impossible. But I still Necrogun, knowing that I don't want to waste those house. And this is probably something I would have done a little differently had I replayed this game. Uh, I probably should have put all three husks on that, on that lane with the two husks. Because then rather than deal three damage to the middle idol with six health uh that fourth idol would have two health which is in low darkling range this way i needed a whole nother hit from the husk um it's definitely key to get things down to low darkling range and uh these kinds of long matchups where 
a, a bit of idle damage could be the uh, winner of the game. So now he has more scrolls than me, so he's going to try to build up the board. Um, and now it looks like it's probably in Pukyu's favor. He has a lot of resources. He can build up the board pretty fast. He's going to get that that husk to uh, count down his harvester and buff his rod eater next turn. And now it's my turn. And I could finally get the Hollows while I'm lost out, but I feel like I'm already behind in this game right now. Um, and I, I'm going to need to win soon if I'm going to win. So I decide to just sacrifice it right here and just put more creatures on the board because I'm going to have to just cycle my deck, get like a watcher again, and try to win this thing. Uh, so I play uh, a couple uh, four drops, and I did languid the harvest of this turn because uh, I know I'm probably not gonna be able to damage curse that thing. He's gonna play a lot of threats, so may as well just weaken it. And now he has uh, two witch doctors in hand, a festering freak. Uh, definitely, he'll just play witch doctor and the festering freak. Pretty clear cut decision for Pew Q here. Oh, I did not sacrifice yet. I didn't notice that. So now he's a choice of really festering freak or rot eater. Uh, wouldn't really be a good time to play Halls of Omasa because uh, he really has to just try to protect his idols now. And I get a Darkling, uh, so that's always good to see. Um, I just want to get as many Darklings as I can and find a Watcher soon and keep putting down creatures. So as he destroys them, I can put enough down. So when I draw that Watcher again, the deck's recycling, like right now, I can do it with enough creatures on the board to have an effect. So I just put more creatures down. Um, and I can fit in a few more. This was, uh, he didn't have anything out in his head I could soul steal, so I decided to finish all my resources by playing a Blight Seed on that Blight Bear, not Blight Bear, uh, Tribeson. And Blight Seed uh, gives you more resources the next turn, gets you more scrolls, so it really helps cycle the deck fast. So I think that was a really big play for me uh, because it allowed me to draw a bunch of scrolls and at this point in the game, I need scrolls. I need to find my necros and my watchers in this next deck cycle as soon as possible. So that's why I played that, and I really doubted that he would waste a damage curse on a uh, two drop, and that doesn't have less. And I didn't want to put it on a two drop or one drop that doesn't have a doesn't have more than two health because then soul steal the thing which he had. So that's why Trisman is a nice blight seed target. Trisman and Blaming Seeker are really nice blight seed targets. And now it's my turn. I do have a Watcher. So I have a Watcher, a Soul Steel. I'm just waiting for that Necrogeddon. I really want a Necrogeddon. Uh, he knows he has to protect those idols, so I'm just, I just have to put down creatures of my own. Uh, I know a Harvester would be really, really good right now. Um, because Harvesters are so good in the late game of the KB. So many things just feel like they die every single turn. That uh, really, whichever side has more Harvesters uh, has a good chance of winning. I have some troubles like placing my creatures this turn, I'm not sure like where to put them. But it ends up looking okay. I have the harvester all the way to the top, not really threatening the middle idol, which is unfortunate. But I wanted to stay away from his harvester, which is attacking this turn. Only with six attack though. So he has a bunch of creatures attacking this turn. I'm set to lose some of them. And looking at his hand, he has two more harvesters and a lot more creatures are gonna die this turn. So I did not see this hand and that is very, very scary at around nineteen uh, being able to go, um, being able to go with, uh, did, did he, does he play both? I'm trying to remember. Uh, yeah, being able to go triple harvester in round 19 in the Decay Mirror match with none of the harvesters being threatened. This looks bad. Two of them at one countdown, and I really need to find, uh, Necker again, like, like now. The middle of the idol's at one health, um, a watcher getting here, I have enough creatures on the board to actually do a lot. I would lose out on a big attack with a harvest arrow, which would do four damage to the top idol. But I would I would make I would roll the dice. Uh, I do not draw the Necker again though, but uh, two oblivion seekers is not a bad option, but I really have to get rid of one of those harvesters though, because um I just have to get rid of one of the harvesters there. If I don't, uh, likely I'm going to lose the game. Uh, because harvest did a lot of idle damage at once. And there's a little, there's a little, uh, not really, I'm not sure if it's a bug, but spectate. Taxing cards like Dem Curse, the, the number it shows there is not always the actual correct number. That Dem Curse only cost uh, four or five for me. Uh, five, it cost a five for me because I used one Dem Curse earlier. So that's why I was able to play the Oblivion Seeker as well. So he just gets, he has a nice, 
He had to go to 11 resources, which means he's going to be really top taking every turn, but he definitely wanted to get down that uh, Living Seeker Witch Doctor drop on the top. He really has to protect those idols really well. And now I'm down to uh, I'm down to four creatures on my board. Every turn, every passing turn, it looks bleaker and bleaker for me. Um, but I know I still have a chance because Watch Again probably going to be a chance of uh, getting lucky idol hits. And uh, I probably should go to 11 resources, but I just want to, I have to cycle through my deck as fast as I can. And I do get the Necro Geddon. So now I'm thinking, do I do it? It's actually possible I can win this turn. I would just need, I would have four creatures on a Watcher. I would need one of them to hit the middle idol to destroy it. And one of them to hit the uh, five health idol. So it goes down to three so that um, a husk can destroy it. Because I just I could just curse the witch doctor with uh, my my witch uh, curse the witch doctor with my curse monger, and then I would be able to destroy that with one husk, and the other husk would destroy the idol. But unfortunately, um, I was not able to do that. I only destroyed middle idol, and the other idol I wasn't able to hit. So I'm not sure the percent chance of me winning there. I think it was I think it was high enough to warrant a try there. And it, Looks as soon as I did that, I was like, "Oh, I, it didn't work. I probably lost the game now." Uh, but Pukyu starts to get some not so good draws. He uh, doesn't really have anything to win the game. Obviously, he has to destroy that uh, that Watcher. Um, but I didn't lose yet because there's a two health battle right there, and you know what two health means? Loyal Darkling, uh, killable. I don't know. So there, I basically don't have much stuff. Um, I think a key thing that a QQ could use is a Watcher. I'm not even sure if his deck had them. I saw he had Necrogeddons. Uh, and now here, I just, I'm looking for the Darkling. I am looking for the Darkling. I have to get a Witch Doctor out uh, because I have to just wall up. I have to buy enough time to draw a Darkling. I have to prevent him from winning the game. Just Getting Witcher down is kind of the perfect thing to do there because Witch Doctor really slows things down. You it makes all the humans require more hits to destroy bees than you have to kill a husk afterwards. Cluster Hex is going to help PQ there. He's able to get rid of the uh, the tribesmen quicker. And uh, these two are so they're going to count down really fast with the husk dying too. So now they're both at two health. And now they're at one health. Uh, not health, I mean countdown. So I am really scared here. <laughs> Uh, I'm sacrificing souls and no darkling. Every turn is that everybody's crossing their finger. Uh, I mean, I'm crossing my fingers. I'm rooting for me, <laughs> but I'm sure uh, it's really tense for anybody rooting for either side. Uh, so I play the two oblivion seekers, knowing that they, uh, if they die, I'll get a lot of scrolls, and that will help me sift through my deck faster. And I have to just find one of those darklings. I think I have three darklings in this deck cycle, which I haven't drawn yet. And uh, now the bottom metal is destroyable by that uh, harvester it's my turn I did draw a damning curse I can deal with one of the harvest I draw a watcher and I have a soul steal so right now I could roll the dice with a watcher soul steal on my husk or something and have a one in three chance of uh, winning the game I would just have to have it hit the uh, two of idol and I win but right now I'm thinking you know what I think I have a higher than one third chance of winning the game if I keep playing uh, because I think I can with the damage curse I can maneuver around and just protect myself enough to survive another turn I just look at the board I see if he damning if he necro guns he doesn't win yet I haven't seen a watch yet so I'm betting against the fact that he plays a watcher uh, so I know that he has a harvester attack and he's gonna clear my board this turn but this is really to buy one more one more turn because if I did a watcher soul steal uh, that could have just I could have lost right there, but then I lose the Watcher, and I lose the Soul Stealer, pushing you for a Darkling, maybe, and you could just win. So I I think I'm still going to have that option of the Watcher Soul Steal next turn, but I try to hold off on resorting to that for as long as I can until I think I'm going to lose. Uh, I just want to see if I can just have another turn of drawing that Loyal Darkling. So yeah, he destroys uh, that, and I'm just going to lose really soon. And there is the Loyal Darkling. I drew it. I'm going nuts right now. Uh, I just beat PewQ two games in a row, something that uh, is really hard to do as PewQ is probably the best player in this game. Uh, so yeah, I'm really happy with that. And that was uh, 
So now that you know I beat PQ there, I actually didn't lose a whole game. I didn't lose a single game in the entire tournament. So I went nine and zero or eight and zero because because I was uh, in the winners bracket in the final. I had a one game advantage. So we're not going to count that. So yeah, I went eight wins, zero losses to uh, win the 100 euros, and that was a really fun tournament. So yeah, I just really wanted to share that game with you all because it was one of the best games I've played in a long time. So thanks for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more content. Follow me on Twitch. Follow me on Twitter. I promise I'll have the new computer soon. And get hyped for Echoes, everybody. I'll have lots of videos on that soon.